What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? My name is Mr. Dom Rocks, and today I'm taking a look. Well, I'm not even taking a look at much, but um, I've had a couple of messages of late, and people asking about streaming to Twitch because I've been getting more and more into it. And there are lots of video guides, lots of setup guides, and I'm just giving my twist on this. And um, you know, people just want to have my opinion. So here we go. To stream on Twitch, um, you need software. Um. Twitch gives you some information on broadcasting while you play, so you can use the open broad you can use open broadcast software, which is free. You can use XSplit Gamecaster and X XSplit or XSplit Broadcaster, which are part of a paid subscription service. Um, you can buy these at like six month uh, periods or twelve months, and you know you just pay pay a license to use it per year. Um, there's some free versions of it, but it's not as good. Wirecast and Evolve, I've never heard. I've never gone near, so I can't help you there. But I'm looking at the, the like the three main ones or the two main ones. If you just in, uh, if you include XSplit as a single piece of software. Now I covered the Gamecaster in a video. Um, OBS I've covered in some other stuff. I think or oh, there's lots of other videos out there. Um, setup guides, etc., etc. But what I'm going to look at fundamentally is what do you need to stream on Twitch? Now. Before you look at, I need this piece of software and I need to go spend X amount of money on hardware and we have a tab at the top that obviously says Intel i7-4770K. Actually, it's got most of my, my PC build in it. Um, actually, it, I think it includes my entire PC build. I think I've sw I'm switching out the processor real soon, so I put an i7 in there as an example, but I'm actually running a different processor um, at the moment, um, which I'll explain or I think I mentioned in some other in another video. But anyway... Before you look at software, looking at streaming on Twitch, looking at spending money on anything, you need to know what your internet upload speed is. So that's where speedtest.net comes in. So jump into speedtest.net. This is mine of a few minutes ago. And as you can see, it shows my download speed 74.50 megabits per second. And my upload speed is 17.62 megabits per second. Now, the download speed isn't an issue here. The download speed is negligible when it comes to streaming to Twitch because you're uploading video. So before you can even think about buying hardware, setting up to stream, you need to look at what your upload speed is doing. And if you're getting three or less, it's kind of really difficult to stream. And you, if if you're going after crisp 720p, 720p, 720p gameplay, you are really going to struggle at three and less you will have really poor connections you will have very uh, you you will be pixelated to fuck now it all comes down to why you're streaming to twitch if you're doing mlg gameplay and you want to stream your comp csgo competitive gameplay and you want to eventually then go from streaming on twitch doing this showing off your skills your mad live skills and building a player base that way, then you want crisp 720p, 1080p, high res, 60 frames per second gameplay. Um, you don't want pixels. Now, if you're streaming for not ESL competitive gameplay, but for personality, to be entertaining, to be your Oshi 7s of the world, to be your man vs. game, to be your, uh, I don't know, Broken Pixel, um, who's a friend of mine, um, to be just an entertaining streaming personality over... Uh, MLG gameplay then you can kind of get away with less um, depends on what you're trying to do with your stream um, I'm an, I'm fortunate enough to be in an area where I can get BT where I can get high download high upload and I can stream to Twitch and get a pretty crisp 720p video etc um, etc et so that's something you have else you have to look at and now we're going to look at some specs. We're going to look at my computer specs. At the moment, I'm not using the 4770K, but that is uh, besides the point because my processor is just as good to encode the video, and I'll explain some bits and pieces. So this is pretty much my build. Um, it's got everything that's currently in it, including some stuff that you can't buy because it's a bit old, and it's just there's, there's no price listed anywhere for it. So like my monitor, it's only a 1080p monitor. It's 23 inches, does me you know don't need anything extra and the pricing on it at the moment yeah it's it doesn't exist my power supply it exists it's in my system but it's it's a few years old now and it's end of life so it's been replaced with a different 
like power supply so that's why there's no pricing there but estimating at 1329 pounds right now that is when you take away the mo the the, C the PSU and the the monitor obviously the price comes down um, uh, on those those two items there I could guess I could manually input some prices and then that bang my price up so that's what you're looking at if you were to buy my rig now that's because I have 150 pounds worth of headphones I have a 60 pound mice uh, mouse I have a 114 pounds keyboard right now I'm pretty sure I paid more for that uh, but I didn't buy it from Amazon but um, hey um, you know my graphics card cost more when I purchased it than that um, etc etc so it's it all comes down to I don't know why that's selected uh, that area of PC for that but anyway um, I know I bought this from Amazon and it was cheaper but besides the point if you're looking at um, buying a reasonably good or a, a high-end gaming PC um, this is the kind of specifications you're looking at and then the literally the price point on certain things is literally down to which manufacturer you purchase it from so we're going to move on and we're going to look at the software side of things and as I mentioned before um, XSplit you register you pay for a subscription and just to just to have a good look the premium service which allows you to do all of these things is does it give you a price is there a price is 24 pounds 95 for three months worth of usage that's three months that's ridiculous um, the personal one here which I think has a few limitations um, essentially if you're going to be a streamer and you're going to then um, <clears throat> use your stream to make money by running adverts um, the commercial use license here for any commercial purpose which includes earning revenue directly or indirectly from for view uh, from viewers of your broadcast so if you use XSplit personal you cannot uh, make money off of your stream they're saying that you cannot receive donations and you cannot run adverts so unless you buy by the premium version you're kind of out of luck there everything else is exactly the same it's just a few things here the local streaming stream delay projector bulk license option at the bottom the main one is commercial use so if you're going to be a streamer that um, has a lot of viewers and you're going to run an advert or you're going to expect you're going to be uh, receiving donations I'm not saying that starting off you're going to get that you know you're going to get there that quickly it's going to take some time to get to that point um, XSplit um, personal which is cheaper isn't your option you have to go for the more expensive one and this is like a three month thing here which is kind of a kick in the teeth but um, you know every three months you pay 24.95 and you can just have that recur every three months but that's up to you. Now we're going to take a look at Open Broadcaster. Open Broadcaster does everything that XSplit does with a few extras and it costs nothing. It is completely free. You can make a donation if you want to, but that's just personal preference. There is a few other things that this can do. This has some plugins because it's open source. You can have, there are plugins being created. Uh, Night, uh, Night Dev, the people over at Night Dev that create Nightbot have some plugins for different things, whether it's for your chat to appear on screen uh, on your stream for pop-ups for donations for followers for subscribers all those kind of things and save you do the, doing them manually or having some other thing running it can run within OBS itself which is great um, uh, as well as a few other things for like if you're playing some music or you're using night dev to uh, play music um, using the auto DJ which to be quite honest unless you're using um, if you are a partnered streamer you can't do that but uh, anyone else like me that's just like getting uh, a few viewers at a time um, that's great you can do that and now we're gonna move on to the next bit now I've babbled on a bit more the, than I wanted to on open broadcaster but now we're gonna move on now you got two choices and now I'm gonna look at the first choice this is the more expensive one and then we'll look at the cheaper option afterwards when you're capturing your video there are a few options XSplit and the Gamecaster have an automatic game capture option built into them. Now, the Gamecaster is okay, but um, isn't fantastic. And OBS's game capture also doesn't give the best quality and uses more CPU processing or GPU processing, depends on which processing method you're using for encoding video. It will, um, will not be as stable 
and can and will just crash out and crash your game and cause problems and not be as visually as good as say using the Ava Media Live Gamer H Live uh, Live HD Gamer or whatever whichever way you want to put it Live Gamer HD it sounds better, um, which is a video capture card and so you're looping you're looping your your uh, HDMI video out of your graphics card into the Live Gamer itself and then you're selecting the Live Gamer with an OBS as a video source and and then it's basically capturing your desktop. It'll capture your desktop 24/7 as long as you're running. Like uh, it doesn't ever switch off. Then you launch the game and you switch scenes and you're in the game and it's it's on the screen. It's on your stream. So it's kind of the it's a win-win. You're paying for uh, video encoding or video capture, hardware-based rather than software-based, via this uh, Ava, we, via the Ava Media Live HD Gamer, which has been used by a lot of different streamers. It's what's recommended by a lot of people, and that's why I have one in my system right now and the other option which I've used before which I've used for just video capture as well as for streaming you have DX3 so we're gonna have a look over here we're gonna look at DX3 now DX3 it works out at about 40 pounds um, off the top of my head essentially it is a video capture piece of software um, it's able to capture just it only captures your video game it doesn't capture any of your uh, your desktop whatsoever it doesn't have that option so it can capture your uh, your video, your game as it's running. Um, there's a bunch of different op options here. It has some audio, multiple audio sources, so you can record your gameplay plus your microphone if you're using it to record. The streaming options. There's a video. There's video guides out there. I'm not going to cover it here, but it it is able to create. It is able to capture your video and output it as a video source to um, to XSplit. <coughs> So uh, that's always a good option uh, uh, to XSplit, sorry, and to OBS. So uh, basically, it turns it into a digital, into um, into a digital capture, video capture over a, uh, a actual hardware-based one. It's all software-based. So that's pretty much your only options when it comes to streaming to Twitch. And uh, yet again, I'm just going to cover the points again. You need to look at what your upload speed is, and then look at what hardware you've got. Um, if you want to do um, like high FPS gameplay, to be quite honest, 30 FPS is enough, especially streaming to Twitch. I mean, the stream output to Twitch needs to be about 30 FPS. You can get 60, but it's kind of lost. Um, that adds extra uh, to your video encoding. That adds a lot to your your upload, what you uh, you have to set your um, your upload to, and then other people are going to struggle to watch your stream when you're trying to upload too much um, at a too high a bit rate I should say so you have to change your bit rate to get the better quality and the better quality higher the quality the higher the bit rate and the more people have to download to stream to to watch your stream and then if they're on a poor internet connection which a lot of people are they're not on the best of internet connections they don't get the connection that I do um, you know at peak time um, so the people are going to struggle so you need to keep a, a mind in what um, what you're going to use for your upload uh, your bitrate <clears throat> so yeah so then look at hardware and this is like an ex example of what I have so you can like if you've already got a lot of these things you can take these off the pricing but then like having a 4770k is fantastic it's something I'm considering switching to right now I have a different processor I have a Xeon processor because it was a quite a bit cheaper actually it's about what the price of this uh, the 477k is now <clears throat> so there's a bunch of different options there and obviously we've covered XSplit and everything else but anyway um, I hope you guys have found this interesting I haven't ever haven't babbled on too much and I've given you all the information you need to make an informed decision on whether it is worth your while to stream on Twitch. So yeah guys thanks for watching.